This is Melissa. I'm from Texas, and I'm listening to the Basement Seller Podcast. Well, hey, hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Amazing Seller Podcast. This is episode number 403 and session number 124 of Ask Scott. This is where I answer your questions on the podcast, and I do it every single Friday, and we are going to do it again. Now, you may have realized that last Friday, we skipped an Ask Scott session, and if you missed it, well, then you didn't know that we skipped a session. But yeah, we skipped it for a good reason, though. It was episode 400. And uh, we wanted to celebrate a little bit. And I also wanted to go over some of the things that I've learned since starting the podcast and doing over 400 episodes. Now, that's 400 episodes with like, you know, episode numbers, but I've done bonus episodes. So it's probably closer to probably 405, 408, something like that. Well, now we've, we're at 403. So it's going to be a little bit higher than that. But. Yeah, we celebrated. We uh, we got on and uh, we talked about a lot of the things that I pulled away from all the interviews that I've done or just how things have evolved, how things have changed, what I believe is still probably the things to do now that will also work you know, in the future. So, uh, you know, I, I kind of dove into all that stuff. So if you did not listen to that episode, you're going to want to definitely check that one out. Plus, I'm doing something pretty cool. Now, depending on when you're listening to this, uh, if it's around this time, if it's in August or even in September, um, I'm going to be giving away two free 30-minute coaching calls to a couple of a couple of listeners, and I'm doing that because I want to be able to connect with you, but I also wanted to celebrate the 400th episode. So again, depending on when you're listening to this, but you can still head over to this link. I'm going to give you this link right now, and this is where people are already right now, and it hasn't even been 100% like out there that long. People are already on there going through exactly what I wanted them to do in order to uh, basically be eligible for this uh, this little contest that I'm doing. So you're probably asking, Scott, I didn't listen to that episode yet. What do I got to do? Well, what do you have to do? It's pretty simple. Go to this link, theamazingseller.com forward slash story. All right. And all you have to do is two things. One, you're going to go to a Facebook post and on that post, you're going to put in number one, how long you've been a podcast listener. And then number two, one big takeaway or one thing that you've really pulled away from listening, whether you've been listening for a week or whether you've been listening for three years, well, not three years, two and a half years, whatever it's been. I think three years will be in February. Uh, so with that, that's what I want you to do, okay? Go over there, do that. It's already blowing up over there. A lot of great, great feedback, and it just really, uh, it, it really feels good to know that, uh, that I'm connecting with, with people from all over the world, and to hear your story really fires me up. So go do that. I'm going to be picking two winners, and I'm going to be doing it randomly, and uh, I'll be uh, reaching out to those people. We're going to get on Skype, and we're going to do a little 30-minute coaching call, so that's going to be a lot of fun. So I really Want, uh, want want to be able to do that, and I'll report back on those coaching calls too and tell you how they went, but go over and do that, all right? Now, we are going to jump into today's questions. We've got three or four questions that we're going to be addressing, and uh, we're going to be talking about should I bundle to increase sales, and I mean, I already have a product that's already selling. Uh, should I create a bundle of something that could maybe go along with it and then create a variation? So that's what we're going to be talking about, and actually, there's a friend of mine that is actually in this exact uh, you know, position right now that we uh, we actually talk through. So I'm going to also talk about that. Partnerships and outdated resources. So someone asked Scott, should I do partnerships? I've got a couple of things going and I think that it's a really great thing, but I'm just not sure. Can you give me your feedback on that? And then also about like the podcast. It's been out now for quite a while. You know, should I start at certain parts and what shouldn't I listen to? And we'll go into that. And then does inventory levels help you rank? And you may have heard this and uh, I'm going to give you my thoughts on that as well. So with that all being said, if you want to ask a question on an upcoming Ask Scott session, it's pretty simple. All you have to do is head over to theamazingseller.com forward slash ask, and you can do that. And uh, just please put your first name and where you're tuning in from maybe, and then just a brief question, and then we'll do our best to answer here on an upcoming Ask Scott session. All right. So before we jump into today's questions, I do like to, you guys know this, I like to give you my thoughts for the week. Things that I'm kind of thinking about or maybe things that I've seen that I, I think you should be aware of or just anyone that I'd be sitting down with having a cup of coffee, I'd be like, you know, this is what I'm thinking right now or maybe this is what I think other people need to be aware of. And what we're going to be talking about today really quickly is expectations. 
What are your expectations? What do you expect out of this business or where you're going in the future, where you're moving towards, right? Some people come to me and they go, Scott, I want to start this Amazon business and I want to be able to leave my job in three months. Well, those are expectations that I don't believe are really a good set of expectations because it's going to be hard and it's probably not even going to be possible for that to happen. I wouldn't even recommend you going in with those expectations. So I think people have expectations that they're going to start something, immediately see a result, and they're going to be able to scale this thing really, really quickly. And that's not generally going to be the case. All right. It's going to take work. This is not a get rich quick thing. And it's funny going back to the people that are leaving comments on that link that I posted in Facebook about your story. A lot of people, and I love it because people are saying, Scott, you've basically said you're going to fail along the way. You're going to learn from those. And as long as you keep moving forward and pressing on, then you're going to be okay. And I still believe that, but I love it that that is the message that I'm that I'm putting out there and it's, it's resonating and it's also being consumed that way. And it's being, uh, you know, I guess, uh, delivered that way. So this way here, you guys are getting the right message from me. I never want you to think that it's easy. I never want you to think that this is a get rich quick thing. Cause it's not. And to be honest with you, I don't believe there is one out there. And if you're hearing that there is one, uh, with break, you know, these, these nice shiny cars and yachts and all that stuff, it's to me, it's, it's, my BS meter goes off. I think anyone's does. It's just, you want to hope that there's this thing, right? You, it's like winning the lottery, right? It's like, man, if I could just close my eyes and, and just make this thing happen, oh, this would be awesome. Like just click my you know fingers and it all happens. And I win the lottery. It wouldn't to me, number one, you know, yeah, it might be cool for a day. Okay. Or, you know, a little bit longer, but it, it, it's so much better when you work for it, number one, but number two, you know, you're, you're never going to be able to do that. Your chances are so much less than if you just put in the work. And if your expectations are, let me give this thing a solid, you know, certain amount of time, like six months, eight months, a year, whatever it is, let me give it a certain amount of time and let me set my expectations to something that I know that I can probably achieve. Now, I'm not saying that you have to make these things. So like, I, I only want to make a dollar. Like, you know, set your expectations a little bit higher, just a little bit, like raise the bar a little bit. And then from there, you can strive to maybe go for that, right? And then if you come a little short, guess what? You're still better off because you would have shot yourself down a little bit lower if, you know, if you would have set your, your bar a little bit lower. And that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is going from here, you know, where you are in the start, you know, in the starting gate. And then being able to be, you know, making, you know, six figures a year, not even a month, you know, people are out throwing out these numbers, six figures a month and a million dollars a year. Yeah. That's not profit. Number one, number two, what, 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 what does it take for, for you or anyone to be able to, to support your lifestyle? And then also if you're only building that on Amazon, is that really a solid, uh, you know, plan? Probably not. That's why we build a list. That's why we build our own e-commerce store. Like that's what we're talking about right? So your expectations are big. And I just want you guys to know that you need to set up realistic, but yet, yes, set it a little bit high. I'm not saying don't set it up high. Cause I want you to be striving. I want you to be reaching a little bit, right? Get a little bit out of your comfort zone a little bit. Maybe work a little bit, a little bit harder, right? Because you want to achieve that. I'm not saying that, but to say that you're going to be able to start something today and in two months, quit your job, just, it's just, you're setting yourself up to be disappointed. All right. So your expectations need to be good and they need to be, you know, real and with reality in mind. Okay. So good expectations and just understand there's nothing out there. That's a get rich quick thing. There just isn't. All right. So, uh, all right. I went on a little bit of a rant there. I'm sorry. I know a lot of you say you like those rants, so I will keep them coming. Uh, but let's go ahead and, uh, let's get rocking and rolling here. All right. Let's go ahead and listen to today's first question and I'll give you my answer. Let's do this. Hey, Scott, this is Scott from Wisconsin. So I've got a question about, uh, let's say, increasing product sales on an item that you have already been selling for a while. Let's say you have a garlic press that has hundreds of reviews, is selling well, and you want to increase the sales by offering a bundle that has your existing garlic press plus something else. Let's say uh, if you look on your product listing and it says, People who have purchased your garlic press have also purchased on uh, an apple slicer, for example. Well, you know that you could source an apple slicer uh, and private label it 
Uh, and you could create a separate listing for that Apple slicer, but you're going to be starting out with a new listing that's got zero reviews and you have to work up to get a ranking for that. What if there was a way to add a variant to your existing garlic press, press listing so that it gives the option for a customer with a drop down menu that the other variant is the garlic press plus the apple slicer? That way you're piggybacking on your existing listing and not having to start all over. So uh, it basically gives you a lot more exposure right away and increases your uh, average order size. Uh, if you have any tips on how to do this, maybe it's just as simple as creating a variant and then that variant is just the two products packaged together and you ship that into FBA. Um, I guess I'm just not sure how that works. I've never used variants before. If that's allowed, if the product images change appropriately based on the selection so customers aren't confused. Um, any tips on this that you might have would be greatly appreciated. Thanks. Hey, Scott from Wisconsin. Thank you so much for the question. And it's a good one. And uh, it's funny because I just recently, when we were in North Carolina, we had our uh, our TAS breakthrough uh, little workshop there that we had. And uh, one of the guys there, one of a, a good friend of mine now uh, through this this whole TAS you know community and everything, uh, you know, I'm kind of working with him a little bit since the beginning, actually before the podcast was even started, just before it started, actually. And he's got a really, really great product that's selling really, really well. And we sat down and, and you know, he was kind of looking at, well, maybe I should do another product in this market or maybe I should do another one. And I go, wait a minute here. You know, let's look at your numbers. And number one is numbers are crazy, like over 20,000 sessions a month on one SKU, actually two SKUs because there's a variation of it, not a bundle, just a variation of it, okay? So my first thought was, why don't we just try to get more exposure to another variation or to another product? So you're talking about, and that would be a simple one, exactly what you said, right? You know, frequently bought together, you sister those two up, you make a bundle, now you offer that on your listing, now people that come to your listing are gonna have the option to buy the bundled version, right? It makes total sense. So yes, that would be an easy way to do that. And you don't have to create a new listing. You're going to be able to capitalize on your, your reviews and, and all of those, those good things that happen with a seasoned listing you get, right? The problem with that is, is we're kind of relying on one listing again, right? We're, we're still relying on that one listing. Not so much inventory wise, because the thing that I've been kind of realizing even in the new brand is that, you know, we have multiple variations, which is kind of cool because if we run out of one variation, it doesn't mean the whole listing goes down. So that's cool. But on the other side of this situation or this, this, this equation is really, we want to also have a separate product that could also be kind of doing its own thing. Okay. So in your case, yes, I would do the bundle and make that a variation. That's a simple one. But I would also start thinking about all that traffic that you're having. Why can't we then use that traffic when people hit that listing? So they're going to see in that little promotion area, that little promotion window, and depending on your category and market and all that stuff, depending on where that actually appears, I know for us where it appears, it appears, um, and not always, but sometimes it will appear just below the price now before you had to scroll down a little bit further. And so it'll say like buy one, uh, you know, at regular price or buy one and get second one 25% off or, or on additional uh, our products or, you know, additional products that we sell, something like that. I don't know the language off the top of my head, but it, something like that. So they're going to see that once they land on my listing. So now you have traffic that can go directly to another product that you offer, not even on that listing. I mean, on the listing is, is easy, right? We've got a variation. So they're going to look at the variations, but to be able to then drive those people to another product that, but they have to buy one product to get the discount on the other. That's the, that's the beauty there. So you've got two things that I would consider. Number one, I would bundle, like you said, and add a variation. Simple, done, okay? The second part of that is I'd find another product that you wouldn't necessarily make a variation on that listing, but, but create another product that would then be able to be uh, purchased by that same buyer. And then create another listing with another product, maybe even another variation of a bundle of some kind. And then that way there, you're kind of cross-promoting the two. So now you've got the traffic coming to the one that's already currently selling, 
and then you're starting to drive sales to the other one and maybe even do a list, you know, a launch list with that one, an email list, influencer, whatever, and get sales going on that one. So that one there ranks two. And now once you start getting traffic to that one, now you can push sales to the other one that's, that's already doing well, but you could get that one to do even better. Okay. So I think you've got a couple of things that you can do. All right. And anyone else listening right now, this is exactly what we're talking about. And this is just Amazon based though, right? If we had our own website, we could do a lot of that stuff, but to be able to do this internally and almost, almost force in a way people to be uh, aware or driven to your other products without Amazon, uh, you know, Amazon will do like frequently bought together and stuff. And if you have two products that are always bought together, then that'll naturally happen. But we can almost do this ourselves inside of our own listing. All right. So hopefully that makes sense. I'm excited for you. I think it's a great opportunity and uh, keep me posted on that. Send me an email and let me know how that works out for you and what you decided to do. I know depending on when you're listening to this, this may have been recorded, uh, you know, a month, month and a half ago, cause I'm getting a little bit behind on the ask Scott session, especially cause last week we took off. Uh, but, uh, you know, hopefully people that are listening also will, will get value from this, but you as well, Scott, um, keep me posted. Let me know how that works out for you. All right, let's go ahead and listen to the next question and I'll give you my answer. Let's do it. Hi, Scott. My name's Josh. I'm from uh, Utah and I really want to thank you for what you're doing. It's really helped me out a lot. I started listening to other podcasts about three weeks ago or four weeks ago, and they just did not give me information. And I was kind of reluctant to get into this. But when I started listening to your podcast about a week and a half ago, um, it really started clicking with me. I'm currently on episode or podcast 52. And it's been so much help. I already have my first product. I'm ordering samples for it. My second product, um, because I'm having two different partners I'm working with. And Everything's going well so far. And I kind of had two questions for you. It's a two-part question. The first one is, should I be on episode 52 or should I be at a more relevant episode? Because I don't know if these older ones, because it's almost two years ago, if their information is still as accurate as the newer episodes or podcasts would be. And my second question is, do you think that having these two partners is a good way to do this? Um, I kind of only wanted one, but someone jumped in there and wanted me to help them. And that's currently how I got that second one. So any information would be great. Again, thank you so much for what you do. It's really helped me out a lot. Well, hey, Josh, what's up? Thank you so much for the kind words. And thank you so much for the question. I truly, truly appreciate it. And uh, yeah, I I definitely want to answer these questions for you. Number one, let's address this. Uh, And for anyone listening, Yes, there's a lot of episodes and, uh, you know, it's been basically me going through and documenting either my story or other people that I'm working with or people that come on as interviews. And even in some of the, the more, I guess, uh, earlier day, uh, podcast interviews that I've done, the launch strategy that they talked about might not be the launch strategy that we want to use today, or at least it needs to be modified. Okay. So I would say definitely just kind of go through and look at the ones that are most uh, useful for you right now. Now, interviews, they're always going to be useful because even if you listen to an uh, an interview that was way back when, uh, there's going to be things in that that are going to pertain to you right now. I don't think some of that stuff is evergreen. It never changes, right? I mean, I'm not talking about strategy or tactics. I'm talking about just like the overall, like maybe market selection and and that type of stuff, right? Or maybe how you promoted the product, not using like a giveaway list or maybe building an email list. Like all of that stuff is still going to always be kind of relevant. I am looking to do this though. So for everyone that's listening right now, I'm looking to put together like a three or a four, maybe even a five part series of me really going through kind of like on my workshops where I break it down like phase one to phase five and everything in between and kind of like just going through that. So that way there it's current, but then also it gives you that all in, in a, in a nice chunk of, uh, of content. All right. But it's broken down and I'll probably link that up, uh, on a special page, special link, something like that. Uh, so I'm looking to do that soon. So keep an eye out for that. You're going to probably see something coming up soon where I'm going to actually do that in like a five part series. Um, so that's going to be probably coming in the meantime, you know, yes, I would say 
look and see what is happening right now within the podcast. Go back a few episodes or a few, even a month or two, and see if something's there about launching or see if something's there uh, about reviews, right? Because that's those are the things I think that we know that are changing is the review stuff, right? And I've never really been a huge, like, go out there, do a big, massive giveaway to get reviews. Never never said that, never did that, okay? Yes, we've, we've given away 100 units to boost our BSR, and in return, we are getting reviews, but we weren't doing it for just that reason, okay? Now what we're doing is building a list, and then from that list, we're able to push our product, and then once you push product... You're able to also that if you have a good follow-up sequence in place, then you're going to be able to naturally get reviews coming through if your customer service is there. Now, I'm not saying that you would put on there uh, in like an insert and say, give us a five-star review. No, no, never said that, never will. I don't believe in that. So I think that you just have to understand that the terms of service have changed in the review game type of stuff, um, maybe a little bit in the launch procedure. So I would say, yeah, I mean, just kind of skim and pick what is most relevant to you. I don't think you have to listen to all 400 episodes uh, at all, okay? Um, The other thing I would say is if you want it all kind of like, again, broken down and distilled down into about about an hour or maybe 90 minutes, that's why we do the workshop. That's why we do our workshops, okay? And you can go and register for an upcoming one by heading over to theamazingseller.com forward slash workshop. Um, not sure when the next one is, depending on when you're listening to this, but if you go there, it will give you the, the most up-to-date um, one that we're doing. So this way here, you can register, okay? And then that's really what I do. It's like, that's the most current. That is like everything kind of like distilled down and just kind of put into a 60 or a 90-minute kind of workshop, okay? Where we go through the five phases, okay? So I would definitely recommend that, but you're right, right? There's some episodes that were recorded two years ago that aren't going to be a hundred percent relevant. I can't go back and edit all of those. Right. But if we're talking about reviews, you kind of know that now. Right. So I would start with that stuff in mind. And again, maybe you're going to go and look at the, you know, maybe go to the podcast and, or I'm sorry, go to the blog at theamazingseller.com and just use the search bar. And if you're looking to launch, put in their launch product, and then you're going to see everything that's related to that. And then maybe go to the newest ones and then work yourself backwards if you want. Okay. Um, and I'm going to be doing a better job with this as far as organizing the content better and stuff moving forward. Cause we do have a ton of content now. Um, but I would definitely recommend the workshop. That is where I would start. Um, as far as, uh, if you want to look at the entire process kind of mapped out for you, like the roadmap. All right. Now your next question, partnerships. I think partnerships can be really, really good. Okay. But I also think they can be really, really bad. So you have to understand what you're getting yourself into, but it has to be very, very clear as to what you are doing and what your strengths are and what their strengths are. And, uh, and I think you have to go in with the attitude that you're combining forces, all right, and you're not just going to do all the work and then the, the partner isn't going to do the work unless they're just an investor, okay? So if you have a situation or, you know, a, an opportunity where you can take, like, just for example, let's say that you have a local brick and mortar business and they have no idea about selling on Amazon or even online for that matter, but they have a really good product and stuff or products. And you come in and you go, listen, I'll take care of all your e-commerce stuff, all the e-commerce sales. I'm going to get 50% of any profit that comes through. They'd be foolish not to do it because they're going to get all their brick and mortar sales as they are. So nothing's changing there. The only thing that you're going to do is add more money to the bottom line if you can sell their product. So that would be a good one, right? That wouldn't be bad. Maybe you only want to do 25% and give them their, I mean, I, I personally would say it'd have to be 50% to make it worth, you know, your time and everything, but that's a great little partnership, right? You're not taking anything from them, any equity from their business as far as brick and mortar goes. Now, this may be something else that you have someone else that goes, you know, yeah, my strengths are, you know, sourcing and, and doing the, you know, the launch and all that stuff. And yours is more, uh, I don't know, maybe yours is more the marketing externally or maybe the list building and and all of that stuff. So you got to figure out what is the best situation for you. But I think it can be a great opportunity for people that are stuck and they don't know about picking a product or they don't know 
what direction they want to go, but you have someone that has a little bit of momentum or at least someone that has a strength that you don't have and then you can kind of combine forces, that's when it makes the most sense. And for anyone listening right now, understand that even if you go through this process and you launch a product and it's not a success, you are learning a skill. You are learning e-commerce. You will always have this. You will always understand what it takes to sell physical products online. You'll also understand what it takes to private label. And you may be able to go in as a consultant to a local brick and mortar business that might be a pet grooming store. Let's let's take this for example. Let's say you have a local pet groomer and all they do is groom dogs. And uh, yeah, that's that's all they do. They, they cut nails, they, they groom them, they you know, wash them, they you know, clean their ears, all that stuff, right? But they don't sell a physical product that's branded their name. I know actually there's a local place here uh, where we get our dog groomed. And I know that for a fact. They don't sell shampoo. They don't sell special soaps. They don't sell brushes. They don't they don't sell, sell leashes. They don't sell dog chains. They don't sell any of that stuff or the, you know, the little collars, uh, the, the name tags. They don't sell any of that stuff. So why couldn't you go in and say, well, you have a pretty good brand here right? You understand what you like for shampoos, for dry skin and this, that, and the other thing. Why can't we formulate your own or why can't we come up with maybe a certain brush that you guys wish that you had because the ones that are on the market don't do a certain job and now you can sell product to the homeowner and to a business, right? So there's different things that can happen as you get in uh, in, in that environment now. And that brick and mortar store has no idea that you can private label a product. They're like, private label, what do you mean? Like, what does that, what does that mean? Like, I just thought I, I could wholesale a product, maybe. I could sell someone else's name brand, but not my own. No, you can, you can sell your own. So you can go in there, pitch your idea to them, and who knows, walk away with a deal because they know the business. The other cool thing is, is if you want to build their brand around the product, it's very easy, right? Because now you can do videos of them grooming and grooming tips and all of that stuff. That would be amazing, right? So again, just an idea, doggy treats. Uh, I'm just, I can keep going, right? There's a whole bunch of things that you could do for that business. They have no idea about online marketing as far as online sales, physical products, no idea, none, zero. I know this for a fact too. There was actually, uh, we were at a, um, it was a little event here we had in town of all these vendors and they all set up their little things. And there was these ladies making homemade soaps. And we were talking to them. They're like, yeah, we're trying to sell a little bit on Etsy, but you know, it's, eh, we just really don't, we don't really know what we're doing. And we just want to focus on, you know, setting up our little thing here on the weekend and, and, and doing, you know, a few hundred dollars or something like that. And immediately I'm thinking to myself, man, if they only understood how they could take the same thing and instead of sitting there at a booth or even paying someone to sit there at a booth and maybe get a handful of people to buy, right? You could put it online and people could go there and be discovered and then you can sell 24-7 if you want, right? But no idea, right? But I could have came in and said, hey, listen, I'll tell you what, I'll partner with you and I'll only make the money on the, the, uh, the online sales and I'll go ahead and I'll take care of helping you with packaging. I'll help with uh, getting you on gated. I'll help with all of that stuff that needs to be done and then I'll just take 50% of the profit, not, not the gross, right? So I think someone would be interested in that, all right? So you're, you're, you're constantly creating a skill. And I know I just went on a little bit of a rant there, a little bit of a tangent, but a good one, because what you don't realize is you have this opportunity right in front of you because you have a skill set now that a lot of people don't have, okay? And even though people say, Scott, but yeah, but you've got like over 8 million downloads and everyone knows about this. No, no, it's a small, little, little, a little bit that knows. And, and, it's actually smaller of people that are actually doing it. All right. So um, to answer your question, uh, partnerships are good if it's a good marriage. And for you, it sounds like you got two of them. Just don't spread yourself too thin. That's what I would say too. You know, you want to be able to give it 100% of your attention. And if you're not able to do that, then you're going to be giving it 50% of your attention. You're going to get 50% of what you could have gotten if you would have just given it 100%. You could have gotten better results, right? Better results for that that partner or that business. And then from there, you can kind of scale it uh, from that, add other people to the team, all that fun stuff. All right. So let's go ahead and listen to one more quick question. I'll give you my answer. We'll wrap this up and you can get on with your weekend. What do you say? Let's do it. Hey, Scott. Love your videos, really helpful. Keep up the good work. One question, 
If I send 50 units to FBA versus 150 units, will I sell more? Because Amazon is, uh, is, is interested um, to sell more products. So if, I sell, so if I send 150 units to FBA, then maybe I will sell more or I'll rank higher. Please answer this question. It will be really helpful. Thank you so much. Okay, this is a good question. Didn't get your first name. Sorry, I didn't even get it in the email. So uh, sorry. Uh, but anyway, to answer this quick question, because this is a quick one, I don't know the answer to that 100%. I do have a hunch that uh, Amazon definitely wants uh, products or listings, actually listings, that have inventory, especially if they're going to start giving it more exposure. Because if you instantly run out of stock, you know it's not going to do them any good either. Right, so I think I don't know 100%, but I think inventory could play a role only if you have competitors with a similar product that have more inventory, also have you know a good uh, you know a good account, a seasoned account, right? Everything's got to kind of match up, and then from there, if you have three units left in stock, but your competitor has a hundred or two hundred or a thousand, there could be a chance that they're going to help that particular seller uh, rank better because they know they have more inventory. They're not going to run out of inventory and people are going to be able to, uh, to be able to buy it without you running out of stock. I can't say for sure, but I just have a hunch that that could play into it. There could be something in their algorithm that says, you know, and again, it has to take all of these data points and it's going to have to throw it in there. And then it may say, if you only have five units, but uh, you've got 10 other competitors and they all have more than you, a lot more than you, and they're not going to run out because of, they're going to look at the sales velocity too. Like they're selling 15 a day and across 10 listings, like how many are they going to need? Like all of that stuff that could come into the equation, but I don't know for sure. But I would say, yes, if you want to start with 50 units, just to test, test, um, I would probably try to go with a minimum of a hundred. And then from there, uh, try to keep that inventory up. But if you're just running through a test, do what you can do. Don't worry about what you're what you're trying to figure out because at this point it wouldn't matter, right? Because I I just think if you have 50 units in inventory, you can always drive sales with pay per click. They're still going to show you if you're willing to spend money. Period. Um, I don't think that that would come into the equation there, but that could too. But I would say throw money at it, see if you can. And again, if you have 50 units, all you're doing there is testing. You're just testing to see if you can generate sales with low reviews whatever your price point is, like that type of stuff. Um, so I wouldn't get too hung up on that, but it could, especially if you start to get sales velocity uh, and then you have other competitors that are in there with more inventory, that could play a role. But I can't say for certain, but uh, just a few things to think about there. All right, so guys, this was awesome. A lot of great questions. Keep them coming. Head over to theamazingseller.com forward slash ask and do that. And also, if you want to uh, get into the, uh, the little giveaway that we're doing or the contest and you want to uh, be possibly eligible to get a 30-minute coaching call with me, head over to theamazingseller.com forward slash story. And all you have to do is answer two questions. One, how long have you been a podcast listener? And two, what is one thing that you've taken away since listening to the podcast? That's it. And then you're, you're entered in a sense. And uh, we're going to go through and we're going to randomly pick a couple of winners. And I'm going to jump on Skype, myself and Chris Schaefer, that is. I'm gonna actually going to have Chris come on. And he doesn't even know this, but uh, I'm going to tell him that, uh, hey, we got to jump on a coaching call. Be ready. And, uh, and he'll be cool with it. He loves doing them as well. So uh, that'll be a 30-minute coaching call. We'll do that via Skype. And we'll talk about anything that you need to, uh, to kind of bust through any, uh, any roadblocks or any things that you're struggling with. We'll get you through those. All right? So... That's all I got for you guys this week. This is awesome. I'm excited. We're over episode 400 already, and we're moving towards 500, which is always exciting as well. And this February, we'll be having a celebration because it'll be our third year. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it's been a, an amazing ride. And I, I owe all of it to you guys, all of you, you listeners, you loyal TASers out there. Uh, just want to again say thank you guys. You guys are always awesome and keep the questions coming and I'll do my best to answer them, whether it's through email, whether it's through Facebook, whether it's through the Ask God session. All right, just keep them coming. All right, so that's it. That's going to wrap it up. Remember, as always, I'm here for you. I believe in you and I'm rooting for you, but you have to, you have to. Come on, say it with me. Say it loud. Say it proud. Take action. Have an awesome, amazing day and I'll see you right back here on the next episode.